Hi, everyone. This is Tuesday, 3 p.m. Uh, I'm in Toronto, Canada. So this is, uh, you know, on my left, I can see the downtown view of Toronto. And today is a 3 minutes webinar. And what we want to accomplish is to talk about ERC. Such a thing. It's an American thing, right? It's nothing to do with Canadian, Canada. I'm here to see my mom and... Um, you know, after COVID, I haven't seen her for two years. This is great to visit Toronto again. It's a beautiful city. Really enjoyed being here. But I would still want to live in Midwest. So I always want to make that disclaimer. I love Iowa, Minnesota, places like that. All right. Let's share screen. And uh, so we can get going with what we want to talk about today. Our topic is ERC clean update. And I know a lot of you are still working on ERC, even though it has been made available in 2020. And now with time, and you just came around and start claiming ERC and thinking of to claim ERC. Here you are, and I want to give you the update and give you the knowledge of we have here in our firm. And our goal is that for you to hear this webinar and to learn it and to do it yourself. Of course, if you don't want to do it yourself, you want us to help you, and you can call our office, our office phone number 515-288-3188 to uh, get an understanding of what you need to do or have us helping you, right? And our firm, uh, our firm website is communitycp.com, and on our website, you can actually register our webinar. And one of the biggest things we have in our firm is this YouTube channel, Community CPA YouTube channel. You literally can see all the past videos, uh, webinars that we did. So if you type in, if you search ERC, you will get all of our ERC uh, videos. I literally have people telling us that they survived the pandemic because they were following our videos, learned everything themselves and how to do. That is what we want you to do. And we really, you know, there's no way as a firm we can help everyone out there, but we, our videos will help a lot more people than we can ever imagine. But of course, when you needed our help, we're here available to you. We are a regional CPA firm, provide a variety of services, accounting, advisory, legal, audit, payroll, taxes, and you name it, and we speak nine different languages. That's why sometimes we say that we're just the United Nations. And, you know, speaking that many languages doesn't mean you have to speak another language to work with us. It is really just means that we are so available. Even if you speak another language, we're here to help you. About myself, I am the CEO and a managing partner, and I serve on National Taxpayer Advocacy Panel. And this is a, a committee to provide advice to IRS. And you see my email address, and you can literally submit your recommendations to IRS through me as one of their members, or you can actually go to irs.gov, type in improve IRS, you will get to the site to, to submit your comments. And I actually know one of the practitioners just did a really good comment. I thought that was perfect. One of the comments, uh, the comments they, they submitted is that they want to see the the history of the notices. You know, sometimes we get an IRS notice, you are totally surprised. You didn't know what happened, what happened to the previous notice, right? So we are recommending IRS to put in those previous notices, the date, the letter number, and the address they mailed to. Because if they could do that for the taxpayer, taxpayer would know that, oh, I got five letters before this already, right? So that, I thought it was brilliant. It's one of our associate actually thought about that and I put it in the recommendation. Here, this is my first book and I'm working on the second book. It's appointment with Ying at 10 a.m. And no responsibility disclaimer. And we always want this slide to pause for a second so you know that take responsibilities on what you learn. And if you're not sure, don't submit your ERC claim. Let professional take a look at it, right? And ERC now. First of all, I want you to know it's not late to claim. Don't don't panic. Five years from eligible quarter. So if you're eligible for the quarter one of 2021, folks, you have five years to do it. So no rush. No rush, literally. 
And so you can always claim it. So that's why when you claim it, we like to see people do a very thorough job. And instead of rush it as if the money is no longer there, let's rush for this like an IRF kind of way. No, ERC is not the same, right? So I want to talk about ERC summary, eligibility, ERC credit, and claims, and the common mistakes on ERC. Let's get going. Okay, let's talk about ERC summary. So the employer will get full ERC back if employer already paid 941 taxes. And ERC amount has this 50%, the 70%, the 70% for 2021 is qualified wages of the 70%, the maximum is 10,000. The 50% is for 2020, and that is maximum of 10,000 as well. But the difference is that's for the year. But 2021, the 70% is for every quarter. So-called qualified wages is wages paid during March 12, 2020 to September 30, 2021. Folks, that goes from the first quarter of 2020 all the way to what? Third quarter of 2021, right? Those are all eligible quarters. For recovery, there is something that, folks, a lot of people don't know about that, and I want you to spread the word. It's called recovery startup business. If you started business and in 2020, if you start the business, you have nothing to reference to, right? You don't have 2019 to reference to. If you are in that boat and you can actually get the wages, you paid wages from July to December 2021, and you get ERC credit as well. The maximum amount of qualified wages is 10,000 per employee annually in 2020, but it's 10,000 per employee quarterly in 2021. Folks, what, what am I talking about is, if in 2020, you paid 10,000, and that would be the 50% of 10,000. But if you say, well, of course I paid 50,000 for that one employee, then no, you only can do 10,000, that's 2020. But in 2021, the 10,000 is quarterly. So that means you could be qualifying for every quarter 10,000, right? 10,000 a quarter means every month you're paying about $3,340, right? The maximum ERC is 5,000 annual per employee in 2020, 7,000 quarterly per employee 2021. Wage paid to buy the PPP and shattered venue grant, RRF cannot be counted as ERC qualified wages. What that means is just that if you already paid your wages out of those government, out of those federal grants, you won't qualify for the, the ERC and don't duplicate on the claim, right? So a, a quick example would be 50,000 qualified wages paid in 2020 then in 2020 ERC claim, you would get 25,000. That's a lot of money, am I right? So 50,000 qualified wages paid in quarter, in a quarter in 2021, you would get 35,000 ERC for that quarter. So this is just a number that we want you to stick in your mind. So it's worth it, it's worth of a claim. Now ERC period is from March 12, 2020, to September 30th, 2021. And know that this is a very special ERC treatment by the government for COVID-19, right? And ERC is not a new creation. ERC existed. But in the, in the past, when there's other disasters going on in the local area, they would declare FEMA and they the employer would qualify for ERC. But that is a deduction to income tax. But this ERC is for payroll tax, right? And so for businesses that began operation before January the 1st, 2020, you have this period you can claim. And there is a category of businesses called the recovery startup. Recovery startup would qualify ERC from July 1st to December 31st, 2021. All right. So now let's look at what is, you know, when we look at this slide and we look at the periods, right? So we know the timeline, but
So the next slide is talking about what makes you eligible. Do you just automatically eligible? No. Let's look at what makes you eligible. Business that began operation before January the 1st, 2020, significant decline in quarterly growth receipts compared to same quarter in 2019. Or government COVID orders fully or partially suspended employers' business operations. So what, what, do, what do I mean by partially? Those restaurants, the best example would be the restaurants, then, you know, you probably can still do delivery, curbside pickup, but you're partially suspended, right? You probably can seat 60 people in the past, but now with six feet requirement, you actually can only seat 10 people. You know, those are partially, those are partially suspended means, right? If you are a medical clinic, you used to be able to seat the, the patient in the clinic and the face-to-face, -face, and now with COVID, you cannot do that anymore, and you can only go through the videos, and your business is significantly reduced. So those are the things we talk about partially. Recovery startup businesses are small business operations began after February the 14th, the Valentine's Day, right, on 2020. Who has the, the memory of Valentine's Day on 2020? I don't even know. I think we're so scared or oh, maybe not yet but because march was the one really roll out with covid 19 probably february the 14th we were still normal with valentine's right i don't remember because my valentine's is already with me for 20 some years so i don't know we celebrate valentine's anymore because we don't qualify for valentine's anymore <laughs> all right let's right. determination of erc eligible quarters significant decline. And I want to talk about two things, significant and also small. What does that mean? Significant decline means in 2020, okay, in 2020, starting from any quarter in 2020 with a gross receipts decline by 50%. What is gross receipts, folks? That's your total sales. Your total sales declined by 50% until after the quarter in which gross receipts recovered to 80% means what? Declined less than 20%. I made that after red because let's say you have a quarter that you declined uh, for 18, but after that quarter, okay? So in this quarter is still qualified. I want to just make sure until after the quarter in which gross receipt recovered to 80%. 2021, quarterly gross receipt declined by 20% compared to the same quarter in 2019, or the preceding quarter's gross receipt declined by 20% compared to the same quarter in 2019. Alternative quarter test. What that means is, let's say if in first quarter, you declined by 20%. The second quarter, it doesn't matter you came back or not, you automatically qualify. It is an alternative quarter test, okay? But maybe your quarter one of 2021, you didn't really decline by 20%, but your December of 2020, you declined by 20%, and then your quarter one should automatically um, qualify. So this is one of the biggest confusion we see out there. People would call and give us the question, so really, that's what exactly that English word means. So it's alternative quarter test. If you are, if you want to study that more, you go on the internet, type in alternative quarter test for USC credit, and you'll get that more. You get more explored uh, explorations to the to the concept. Okay, small startup businesses are those average annual gross receipts is under one million. So if you are a small business, you started on February the 14th, 2020, and your 2020 uh, annual gross receipt is under $1 million, and if you come to 2021, you paid wages from July 1st to the end of December in 2021, you qualify. So that is the recovery 
that is officially called recovery startup businesses. So you qualify for that. Now, the credit, okay? So we have for 2020, is a 50% of qualified wages. Remember, qualified wages is up to 10K, so it's 5K per employee maximum. 2021, it is 70% of qualified wages, but the maximum credit per quarter and is 7K. So it's a 10K in 2020 is per year, but 2021 is per quarter. For recovery startup business, July 1st, 2021, to December 31st, 2021, you're still subject to the each quarter, the maximum is 7K, the 50,000 maximum credit per quarter, which means that the maximum maximum you would get is $100,000 ERC for 2021 as a recovery startup businesses. All right, so now let's look at examples of ERC credit 2020. Wages of three employees in company ABC, okay? Employee one, 5,000, annual, annual. Employee two, uh, then that's a 10,000, 15,000. Actually, these are per quarter. I said it wrong, right? So 5,000 is per quarter, 10,000 per quarter, 15,000 per quarter. That is for three employees. Gross receipts dropped in each quarter of 2020 compared to the same quarter of 2019, quarter one dropped by 10%, quarter two, 55%, quarter three, 30%, quarter four, 18%. So the eligible quarter, eligible quarter, because it is going by 50% drop, right? So quarter quarter two, eligible, quarter one is not. And the quarter three is still eligible because it did not recover to 20%. And then quarter four, it did recover to 20%, it's only 80% drop. So after quarter four, then the next quarter would not qualify, but quarter 2020 is already here. So you have your quarter one ERC claim is 5,000, that's the employee number one, and the 50%, employee number two, 50%, employee number three is 15,000, but the maximum is 10, so it's 15%. So we got 12,500, uh, this is ERC we're claiming for the quarter two. Quarter three, I still have the 5,000 because my quarter three qualified. So I'm going to do 5,000 times 50%. So there you go, I have the 2,500, but because the employee number two and the three, they already used up their annual maximum. That's why there's only 2,500, so your total ERC is 15,000 in my example, right? ERC credit 2021 example, same wages of three employees in company ABC, right? 5,000 per quarter, 10,000 per quarter, 15,000 per quarter. The gross receipts dropped in each quarter of 2021 compared with the same quarter in 2020, 2019. So quarter one dropped 25%, quarter two dropped 21%, quarter three dropped 15%. So folks, you realize that 25% of is qualified because we just need gross receipts to drop 20 to qualify. And the 2020 uh, quarter two is qualified because we just need drop 20% to qualify, they drop 21%. Quarter three actually didn't drop 20, right? But it's alternative quarter. So quarter three also qualified. Now, all three qualified, but of course I made a note right there, say assuming no PPP funds. Oh yes, very important. Folks, you don't want to double count the PPP funds in here. If you use the PPP money to pay for the wages, you cannot claim ERC on that. They are not qualified wages, right? So quarter one ERC is 5,000 times seven. 7.0.7 and 100,000 times 0.70%. And then, of course, the 15,000 employee per quarter, that's over the 10,000, so we're just going to use 10,000. And look at that. Quarter two qualifies. Quarter three also qualifies as an alternative quarter test. So now I got 17,500 per quarter ERC 
credit back to my pocket as an employer. All right. So let's take a look at how do we claim that. Okay, now we kind of, mm, okay, I know how to calculate, we're good with that. To claim the ERC, you either um, do it while you're filing your 941. So claim your 941 if your 941 was not filed yet, right? So the credit can be claimed by reducing your payroll taxes sent to IRS. If the credit exceeds the payroll taxes, you can request a refund. So you can do it that way. And we have quite a few clients. We actually did that way for them for the quarter one 2021 and quarter two 2021 when we were filing 941 taxes. But now, and the time passed, you probably already filed it at that time. No problem, we can file amendment. 941 amendment is also called, the form is called 941X. If 941 was already filed, you needed to file 941X then it will be refunded to you. It does take time for IRS to refund that money to you. I would say that uh, it's probably right now is once at about six months time and we start seeing the refund coming back for the application we put in six months ago. So that's why I'm saying six months, but actually there's no uh, official timeline IRS offered you. So as soon as you put it in and then you can just wait, I would assume that it will be faster and faster because the pandemic is in the rear mirror and people are start getting normal IRS and start picking up work. So I hope that um, we are already over the period where people are not working. So everyone is going back to work, right? Now, common mistake with ERC. And I want to mention these are the three common mistakes. Double dipping the funds and not understanding non-refundable portion, what that means. And the filing procedure is wrong. So let's quickly look at what is the double dipping I'm talking about. We just paid with the proceeds from the venue grants or RAF or PPP. Those are, no, you can't count them again on ERC, they are not qualified wages. If you make the wages out of, if you pay the wages out of other grants. So this is something that I really want you to understand and to make sure you really, you, you calculate your qualification, right? I tell folks that, you know, obviously we're facing the recession and when recession comes, government does a lot of compliance audit. And the number one, that's one way of them recovering the funds that they give out because some of those claims are mistake, are not not right. So the government can do compliance if you get money recovered. Hopefully they get money recovered. A lot of times they couldn't. But uh, in any case, you want to get your eligibility study done really thoroughly. And really, you know, your CPA need to be very thorough in terms to qualify you. But if your CPA asks you to sign a waiver saying that, well, you know, I already did my qualification, eligibility study, I know I'm qualified for ERC, claim it for me. That is okay. There are a lot of firms ask you to sign for that. That just means they did not provide you service with eligible, uh, eligibility. And you probably want someone to provide you with eligibility test and then write up first before you claim the credit. You've got five years to claim folks and don't rush. You can go to your attorney, you can go to your CPA, you can come to community CPA and we will we do eligibility study for you to make sure that you claim the money you should claim. And if you cannot claim, we're also gonna tell you that no, don't claim. It's not worth all the trouble because you don't qualify, right? So that's important not to double dipping. The, the other common mistake is on the 941 form. When you do this non-refundable portion of form, and in 2020 quarters, and 20, uh, 2020, in 2020 all quarters, and the 2021 quarter one and the quarter two, the portion, the employer portion of Social Security is non-refundable. What does that mean? That just means that they give you that portion back to you as a part of the ERC claim, 
but they don't give you more. They only give you back the social security portion of it. So let's say that's six thousand dollars, then your total your total ERC would include that six thousand in there, right? But the other part of the ERC folks is refundable. What does that mean? That means even if you didn't pay enough taxes and you still get all the amount. So it just non-refundable means that if you didn't pay it, you don't get it. To you, really makes no difference. It only makes difference on that form. But if you make mistake on that, trust me, you don't get your money. Okay. But for 2021, quarter three, quarter four, that employer portion of Medicare is non-refundable. It's not Social Security. So that's where people make mistakes because. They're doing quarter one, uh, they're doing 2021 quarter three claim or quarter four claim, and they are still using the social security. No, you need to use Medicare as the non-refundable. All right, that's a common mistake. This mistake doesn't really change your total of the ERC credit, but it does change the form. That's why the 941X is important because you need to fill up the wrong, uh, fill up the right area to not make a mistake because it will deny you if you do. The last common mistake for ERC is filing procedures, right? So Form 941X for eligible quarters is a five year to file instead of standard three years, okay? So, so you know, you gotta work two extra years and the Form 941X needs to be signed, mailed to the appropriate processing center of IRS and they use track mails. Make sure you, you track your mails and also depends on what state you are in and the search and the find out your appropriate processing center. Don't just go with whatever you think you first come to your, to your mind or to the internet, no. Search for 941X instruction because they are separated by the state, right? And the, Know that it could take many months for IRS to process your 941 form and the issue you refund. So not getting the refund within six months doesn't mean you did it, it did it wrong. And you, if you try to call, trust me, you won't get any answers. And they literally tell you they're too busy and you'll call back later. And the three, four hours waiting is very common. So you want to just be confident that you submitted it and it's done and then make sure you track your mail for that all right so that is the 30 minutes we probably gone over a little bit and so this is the erc update and like i said you can always contact our firm to be your solid backup for things that you're doing for a claim we have our uh, individuals here in our firm dr how h-o-u you can email him steve at communitycpa.com and you can email Catherine at communitycpa.com right here on the screen. She will, she will organize what webinars we talk about uh, each week. I show up on Tuesday, I show up on Saturday. Saturday webinar is a longer one. Tuesday is a 30 minute webinar. We're trying to nail down the hottest ask we receive from our clients. And our office opens Monday to Saturday. If you call our office number on Saturday, we have people working. And uh, we are probably one of the, I actually, I only know our office opens six days a week. I don't really know any other CPA firm does that. And a lot of our clients really just have Saturday time available. So we want to meet those needs of the client. And if you ask us, oh, who are your clients? And I guess our clients, our, um, a lot of our business clients are ranged from 1 million uh, to 100 million. These are our sweet spot and we work with businesses of this size. Um, of course, when our clients grow, we grow our upper limit too, right? So we could have clients with more millions and the bigger clients and when they grow under our care. So I hope to see you and I welcome you to become our client and make sure you do your ERC claim if you are eligible and qualified. And I will see you again on Saturday. Bye-bye.